monotone man here and this chapter of kaiju number eight i don't think anyone was waiting for this man because we get the backstory of kikaru we get to see how her mom was and how she died and what motivated kikaru to actually join the defense force and not only that too we can kind of see why how kikaru how her attitude just changed because in the beginning of this whole events where the giant ants were we see kikaru going very aggressive going very fast just pushing herself to the limit being very aggressive and we all thought that it was just mostly because she wants to get stronger which that is the case but we also are able to get to see what's drilling in her mind every time when she faced against kaiju she's facing against the time when she lost her mom and at that moment in time having that thought process is actually motivating her and actually increasing her especially to the point where she sees her friend kafka being at the break of death facing against kaiju number nine and he can't even transform so she's very extra aggressive because in this chapter we see her just not playing any games at all she is whooping ass left to right anywhere that you can name because at this moment in time she wants to protect kafka and she wants to destroy kaiju number nine and while the whole time she's battling kaiju number nine she's just thinking of about her mom and why how much of an impact she was towards her and the whole country of japan because kikaru's mom was 100 percent an elite level like everyone respected her and everyone know how powerful she was not only that too but she was one of the soldiers that was able enough to hold a battle suit that was powered by kaiju number four and while seeing her suit her suit looked it so clean and so badass like her suit looked it like a power ranger or superhero with the cape and everything it was 100 flawless i was just like damn and so it just kind of indicated how powerful she was and how what kind of ability she was able to do and how much of an impact she made in japan because everyone felt safe while she was on the battlefield and how powerful she was and you can see baby kikaru like she's watching her mom on tv killing kaijus being a superhero and everything and that motivated her to actually go ahead and do it but until the time of her death because when she was trying to use the weapon that was powered by kaiju number six that killed her everyone was sad everyone was just depressed because their hero actually died and not only that their hero died but kikaru her mom her hero the someone that she looked up to actually died and it caused a huge effect and it caused a huge rip you know between kikaru her dad and everybody else and at this moment in time kikaru was just like i'm not letting this happen again i'm not letting anyone that i care about actually dies and that's what's going through her mind while she's battling kaiju number nine because she's just thinking of like okay my mom died and this time my friend kafka he's about to die and i'm not letting this happen i'm not letting none of my comrades actually dies because that's what she said towards the end of the chapter while she's going towards kaiju number nine so while she is going through that method we actually start to learn a little bit more details about those battle suits that the defense force is actually using especially the the special suits that you know kikaru's dad is using because kikaru's dad he's using the battle suit that's being powered by kaiju number two so while kikaru's dad was in going to go ahead and help kafka and make sure that he doesn't go berserk because remember at this time kafka can't transform to kaiju number eight kikaru's dad was being stopped by another soldier and he says that hey if you continue using that power of your battle suit it will cause long-term effect and shorten your lifespan and those effects will be lethal and kikaru's dad was like i know and then so he didn't do anything he just decides to let his daughter and kafka handle the whole situation and then so at this moment in time kikaru was just like you still can't transform to kaiju number eight to kafka and kafka was just like yeah i can't and then so she's just like all right it probably has to do with something with kaiju number nine because he's probably interfering with your transformation so they both decided to do a strategy and try to go in both different ways and then you see kaiju number nine going left and right like trying to figure out like who do i'm going to attack first who i'm going to attack first so he started attacking both of them and both of them are like dodging the attacks and at the same time while they're dodging the attacks it seems to work because at this moment in time he's so busy trying to shoot both of them that most of his shots are not very accurate 
because if he was just focusing on one person, those attacks will be 100% accurate. But at this moment in time, he's so busy trying to try to kill Kikaru and Kafka. Kaiju number nine continues to miss. And then while he continued to miss, we see Kikaru getting closer and closer about to try to end Kaiju number nine. And that's just how the chapter ends. And this was a very a great chapter because we finally get to see backstory and like to see what was going on with Kikaru's life and how much her mom's death did really affected her family and her relationship between her dad and herself as well. But other than that, let me know down in the comment section how you guys feel about this chapter. What was your favorite moment? Man, I gotta say, Kikaru's mom was badass, especially to that battle suit that she was using from Kaiju number four. It just looked at 100% so clean. But this is the Monotone Man. This is my new channel because my old channel had gotten recently deleted due to copyright strikes. But this is my new one. So if you guys are my old subscribers, please subscribe back because this is the Monotone Man. But other than that, if you guys do like the video, please give it a like, subscribe, and remember, always be decent and hope you guys have a wonderful day.